So just take the first two or three minutes to look over the article that we read for today's Harkness discussion. Look over your annotations. Bring up two comments or two points of discussion, two questions. Today we're going to be doing the Harkness model or Harkness instruction in which students are going to be having an autonomous conversation around a shared resource. So for today they read about a, an incident that happened in Kentucky in 1995. The reading is called The Death for Dixie and it's kind of framed around our instruction around the Civil War. Embedded in all of these issues are issues of slavery, of issues of race, you know, touchy subjects that I hope that students have built a culture and built an understanding that they can navigate autonomously and with some tact. All right, here are our questions that we're gonna link this conversation to, and we're talking about the, the main cause of the Civil War. We've done a lot of that in terms of content analysis, looking at documents, and again, trying to make sense of modern day Confederate symbols um, in relation to that question. In order for students to get to this point of having a totally autonomous conversation, we've done a lot of scaffolding from the beginning of the year. For the first couple of days, we were having small group conversations around shared resources, and also a lot of culture building exercises to ensure that students felt comfortable around one another in terms of speaking and linking to text. And throughout the year, we've had autonomous discussions. We began with having shorter discussions, around 15, 20 minutes, and then increasingly made it longer and longer to the point now where they are having full group conversations for the entire period. Yeah, so for today, for our Harkness discussion, the first couple of minutes, I'm gonna have students just read through the article. All of them have come prepared, have annotated, have commented on the article. So here are our Harkness objectives. I want you to chat with the person sitting next to you. What are those two comments or two questions you wanna bring up for today? We'll chat and then in a couple of minutes, we'll come back and have our whole group conversation. So I give them a couple of minutes just to read through their annotations and I put up the Harkness objectives for the day. And students make two questions and two comments that align with those objectives independently. After that, students speak in small pairs just about the comments that they want to bring up, their thoughts, uh, their questions. But compare, let's compare that to someone else who talked about like the situation. To say that we're the only ones at fault is like ignorant, but like saying that that entire logic itself is also ignorant as well. And so I just find that interesting and also flawed that someone would think that. This Harkness model is a discussion and it's not a debate at all. There's no winning a Harkness discussion. It, that's not the, the venue for that, if you will. A Harkness discussion is about coming to a shared meaning or some new meaning through some type of resource that we're learning. So we have a few themes that I want you to chat about with the person sitting next to you and then I'm going to ask someone who hasn't spoken to start us back up. The first thing we've been talking about is the theme of ignorance, I think. And we've been saying that with, without like connecting it to anything. Like you're saying like overall ignorance, I understand you're saying like Westerman didn't, he didn't know what the flag meant, he just kind of did it because he thought it looked good or whatever. How does that relate though in terms of, in terms of the Pride and Prejudice, like Nathan was linking it back to the Pride and Prejudice article. We read that article of people flying the Confederate flag and what they thought it meant. How does that relate to the content analysis that we conducted? Like, like we've tried to kind of come to some data, evidence-backed way of saying, okay, this is what this means, whether, whether flawed or not, but we tried to do something like that. How does this theme of ignorance relate back to like what we found in the content analysis? If anything, that's the first thing. The second bit is the location of this. Like this happened in Kentucky. What do we know about Kentucky in terms of the Civil War? And I think there's something there in regards to, again, we're saying that his grave is, is kind of honored as a Confederate veteran, as a Confederate soldier, like we've been saying. I think there's something ironic there, something that is perhaps useful to look at and see, okay, what's up with Kentucky? Where was it positioned in the Civil War? And does that make sense? There's a rubric for Harkness discussions, and the top line is having an equitable discussion. And so I use an app on my iPad called Equity Maps, and I can basically map the entire conversation as it goes. At the end of the conversation, it provides a statistic regarding the level of equity of the conversation. So the number of times spoken, so frequency, and airtime. So, you know, someone speaking for a long period of time will work that into the equity. And so I like to show those statistics prior to the conversation so that students can take into account, oh yeah, how did we do last time? Use that feedback for you know, the, today's discussion. I wanted to show our last Harkness data. Frame this one. Last one, fairly equitable, and especially with the number of times spoken. For the time spoken, 
We're at 65 percent, so just be mindful. You're taking a lot of air time. Back up and let other folks jump in. I hope that it's an equitable discussion that students are taking into account kind of their airtime, how, how much they've spoken. Secondly, I hope they make claims that are linked in evidence from the text or things that we've done in class. And lastly, I'm hoping that students do take some risks. I think one of the pieces on the rubric is taking risks and searching for new meanings. And with a conversation like that, the whole point of this is to make new meetings and to come to some new understandings. So I just wanted to mention something about how history is framed in textbooks, which was mentioned in the article in the North versus South. So I think that the way history is framed and the way that it's taught makes it very evident as to why the debate of what Confederate symbols mean is still prevalent to this day. I prefer this strategy because when we're talking about building meaning, it's important to be in thought. And the Harkness model is all about being just in thought and trying to grapple with what issues mean, how does it relate to evidence, and coming to some new shared understanding. And I think when we're talking about education, it's a lot of it's meaning making. And so I think that this model not only empowers students to take control of some of their own learning, because it's their discussion, they can take it where they want to take it. The states have implemented, they allow these organizations to exist. It's empowering students, it's giving them a voice and some agency, and also allowing them to be in thought together as a community to come to new shared understandings. Have a great long weekend. <laughs>